starting. So I have audio running, I have video running, but I don't have the screen recorded. So um, for the people who are absent, I will probably just post this shape animals. I don't know if I can actually use anything because I just found this. I was randomly looking through my Google Drive and somehow I have access to this, but I didn't make it. I can't remember who made it. But this is obviously for little kids. So I'm gonna flip through this real quickly, but we are going from a little kid's mind into a more three-dimensional world. And so this might be helpful in some ways. And we're gonna talk about how to move from shape to form, because you worked on these thumbnails that's placing the monsters in different areas. But now we're going to start talking about over the next couple of days, how we build out that monster and create it in a way that's a little bit more sophisticated. So we'll go through some actual examples today. The basic idea of this presentation that I really liked is that when you get to, let's see, no, 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 this is like how to draw. When you get to something like this, I love this presentation because it talks about which shapes would be most successful for completing this cow. So I'm going to go back over to my video and I'm going to put this side by side so you can see the video and the presentation. And we're gonna draw this together. This is real simple baby step kind of stuff, but it's helping us get toward the idea. So open up a new file in Procreate. And you can just do screen size. It doesn't even need to be super fancy. And we're just gonna use black. So if you didn't know, you can change your view from disc to classic. So if you see me using the disc today and you didn't know, you can switch. Also, if you didn't catch it from the video, if you double tap near the bottom, it's gonna to go to black. So we're gonna use black. If you double tap in the middle, it'll give you the perfect balance. Double tap up here, it gives you white. So she mentioned that in the video. Let me move this off so you can see. Okay. So I'm trying to tilt this at an angle so you can see. I'm gonna double tap near the bottom and I'm at black. I'm just going to use the uh, inking technical pen. It's kind of my go-to. Inking technical pen is nice because if you draw a perfect shape like this, it's always solid and it's easy to fill. Okay, so I'm black, I'm on the ink, inking technical pen, and I just undid all that to show you. Um, side note, while we're doing this, because this is kind of fun, let's say you use a, a paintbrush, something like this, wet streaky flat, and you do a perfect shape, and the fill is not quite right. Did you know, maybe you did, that when you drop, you don't have to let go. You can fill and then slide down. Or you can slide up to change the amount of fill and then let go. <laughs> okay. Did, did you all know that already? No. Why are your mouths not agape and saying, Oh my goodness, you are the greatest teacher ever. Thank you, Olivia. One mouth agape. That's worth it. It's all worth it. Okay. Uh, guys, if you're curious, agape means open. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna go back to technical pen. I'm on black and then the size doesn't particularly matter. Um, thank you, who's this for? DJ, I have a pass for you, apparently you're leaving. And making my heart oh so sad, but you have 15 minutes. Um, the size, you know, somewhere in there. But let's look at this cow and you can only use shapes and I'm gonna give you you can do a, uh -oh, you can do a rectangle, a rectangle uh, or a square. You know, you can do a triangle, and you can do a circle or an oval. So like the the subset of this is an elongated version of this, but that's what you're limited to. Square, triangle, circle, and choose the best shapes for your cow. I'm gonna do it wrong. What do I think about that? <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. What's particularly wrong with the head shape? It's, it's horizontally. Yeah, it's horizontally oriented rather than vertically oriented. What, what about the ears? What are they reminiscent of? They were like bear, mouse. They're, they're the wrong scale. They're the wrong shape. So um, while you guys were doing it correctly... What did you identify the body as shape-wise? 
Yeah, definitely the body is rectangular, and you can make it a perfect rectangle. Mine's kind of a trapezoid. How about the head? Yeah, I could see a couple different options. I think if you include the ears, a triangle seems like a reasonable shape. But if you have a couple overlapping shapes, you could say, really, it's rectangular. Because it's long, like Samantha was saying earlier. And then I have like a triangle kind of idea for these ears. That's how I'm seeing it. Do you guys see that? And then as long as you don't get crazy and you go giraffe style with these triangles, this would be wrong. Maybe I should turn this around so it's not upside down. Would that be helpful? Josh, would you love that or would you hate it? Okay, for you, Josh, I'm going to turn around. I guess I'll just go crouch over here, Josh. Just to make you happy. Let me see if I can move this. It's going to get a little dicey, guys, but hold on. It's all going to work out in the end. Okay. So as long as your legs don't get super elongated, you're probably going to be fine. You want to keep that basic measurement of the cow is sort of squatty. Squattier than you might think. If you want to get real funny, you can throw an udder in there. That's pretty dope. Okay, little kids see, if they're drawing well, they see and they render in this way. Very simplified shapes. Now, let's take it beyond that. Let's turn it into form. What form does a rectangle become? I'm going to make this smaller so I can do it right next to each other. Oh, no, don't do that. Sorry, I didn't get my ears included. Okay, what form does a rectangle become? Oh, you know what I should do? I'm just, I'm thinking through all this. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to make this one a little bit less opaque. With N, I'm going to make this like faint. And then we'll draw over the top. So I don't want this layer duplicated. I just want to draw over the top. There we go. Okay. So uh, which of these? Now, okay, I guess let me help you out. A, a circle becomes a sphere. A square has two options. Because it can either go into a cube or it can become a cylinder. Yeah. See that? And then a triangle is just going to become a pyramid. Um, really, though, of the three, these are the important ones. Cube, cylinder, sphere. You can basically reduce everything that you see into one of those geometric forms. I wish there was like a, come on, my guy. It's the amount of light. Never mind. We'll keep doing it this way. Okay. So what makes the most sense for this cow? For its body? Cube? Cylinder? Sphere? Cylinder. Let's do it both ways. Let's do it both ways. Let's make it a cylinder. So we're going to draw this into an ellipse. And this into an ellipse. In our reference image, where's the light coming from? Definitely coming from above. So where's the terminator going to be? I mean, in a strict sphere, it's going to be in this middle. But we can tell from our reference image that it turns a more decided corner right here, which is maybe why uh, a cube might be better. But let's continue with the sphere. Right now, I'm going to switch brushes into something that's more suitable like a charcoal so let's do uh, oh there we go charcoals i'm going to do charcoal 4b compressed okay and then i can check the size of my brush and i'm going to start light pressure up here and then progressively get darker as i go down 
And maybe we'll have a little reflected light at the bottom. And you can be fancy with it. Okay, so I'm using the charcoal brush. Do you guys have that? 4B compressed? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm using. Yes, please shout out if I'm busy doing the demo and you're like, wait a second, I didn't get that. Because sometimes I'll go a little bit too fast. All right, and uh, if you double tap your eraser, isn't it double tap and it'll give you the same, or you hold it, what is it? Erase with the current brush. If you hold it down, it'll allow you to erase with the current brush so that you're, it should, but it's not giving me that. Erase with the current brush. But that texture doesn't look right, I don't like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna go into charcoals 4B compressed and use that, Maybe, maybe this is right. But I'm going to lighten it up on this end just a little bit. And the nice thing about this is I could change my opacity if I want to lighten up the eraser on this end. So, just trying to get that idea of lights hitting the top and then it's transitioning as you go down. Maybe that did a little too much. Okay. So, if you were going to do a cube, I'm just going to do a smaller version of it underneath here. I'll go back to my inking and say the cube would be a rectangular prism like this and it maybe slopes away in a very slight we can't see it Whoop. what do we what do we need to do here what are we doing this solution is not great is it Oh, there it is. But it's like all skewed. Hmm. But now we can make that plane that's facing us darker. And the backside actually is not visible. I think it's sloping away from us. So it's going to be more like this. That's how we're seeing the cow right now. So the top is catching a little bit of light and the side facing us, not so much. But either way of thinking about this as a cylinder or as a cube, either one is fine. But you'll notice along its little hips right here, it makes a pretty clear and abrupt shift downward because that is like a, a plane shift. It goes from being flat up here and receiving light to dropping straight down. But around here along the rib cage, it transitions a little bit more. It's more of a gradient. So you maybe could get real sophisticated and say that the hips are cubic and the rib cage or the torso is cylindrical. But that's how you start thinking about these things and applying light logic and the form principle to a flat reference image. Your kids is particularly flat. So if we were gonna continue with this, I don't know that I love the cylinder approach to the legs. I'm sorry, the triangular. I, I think it's more fitting to have them be cylindrical because of how they appear on the object. And I would just fill that in a solid kind of way. Because it doesn't seem to be catching much light. And as you're looking at it, you know, you don't see the cylinder form like this. Because the bottom edge is uh, underneath the leaves or the flowers. And the top edge is actually connected behind a wall of muscle like this. But that cylinder idea of a curved top and a curved bottom is there. Can you see it at all? I need a better camera. I can, I can cast, I think. Let me see. Let me try. Let me just try it.
but it should show up on that screen and it doesn't. Well, I will work on a better solution, but here's our cow. He's developing a little bit. All of these cylinders are being blocked by the mass above it. And the reference image is telling us this, but each cylinder is in shadow. We could be fancy and subtle with it, but there's, there's no point. Right now we're just keeping it simple. Okay, and then the head I definitely think makes the most sense as a rectangular prism. I, I'm going to have it taper, so this is the top plane of the rectangular prism, but then one side slopes like this, the other side slopes like this, and I'm going to erase just a little bit. Yeah, sorry, can you see the head? Let me let me hide this guy underneath. Not really. There we go. That's how I'm thinking about the head. As a rectangular prism, but it's sort of trapezoidal up on this top. So if I whoops. If I define this correctly, where the edges are touching with my technical pen, I should just be able to drag my dark into here. And I might just lighten up this value a touch so you can see that it's a different plane on this rectangular prism. But the top of the light is definitely, when we look at the reference image, it's definitely striking this. And this rectangular prism is pointed toward us where this rectangular prism or this cylinder is running parallel to our field of vision, maybe even away from us slightly, which is why we can see this opening here. So I'm not saying this is a great cow drawing, certainly not. What we're trying to get our brains to understand is that if we start simple, we can begin to develop these into more complex three-dimensional looking figures. It doesn't always need to be neatly shaded either, um, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, we're trying to set it up like that and show it that way. So I'm going to grab some monsters from last year so that we're not doing any drawings from this year. That way you can develop it with your own ideas but we're gonna go over a couple together, a couple monsters from last year. So let me go back. I'm going to show you first one that's been completed, okay? Um, where's Veronica's? Okay, so here is the kid's drawing. And you can see there's some important elements. I'll have to bring this back. That Veronica has interpreted. It's got a flower. It's got some wings with little sunshine shapes. Bye, DJ. And so Veronica made the flower interact with the figure and made the light source be the wings themselves. If that's the case, she has to then imagine how light is interacting with what geometric form? A cylinder. So the light is going to hit the backside most strongly and then it's going to fade as it wraps around. And you can see that she's kept it where it has multiple sets of legs and multiple tails. Okay, that is a really, really good example 
of finishing the monster project. We're just gonna pick one. Helena did more of a stylized rendering. So that's gonna allow us to do this one in a more three-dimensional rendering kind of way. So we're gonna move this over and we're gonna look at this and we're gonna approach this the same way. Now it's up to you how you want to do this. This is all just sort of practicing. So I'm gonna just make a new file. It's easy that way. Screen size is fine again. What would happen? Well, surely there's a better way to do this. I don't know, that makes much difference. Yeah, but only on one screen. So if I, we, if we all moved to one screen, I could cast it, and, but we'd then all be sitting on the floor and the tables in the other room. Um, that would be a great option. I tried to do YouTube Live where this was casting and then the screen would just show that session, but it was a no-go. Is there a simple way to do it that you know of? Okay. I would take any feedback is welcome. Yeah, because the room is open, it's just the one. So, have to figure that out. Okay, so let's begin with first... Uh, I don't know, what's, what's first? Should we just keep it simple? You want to do a simple version of this? We won't make this super crazy or exaggerated. We'll try to keep the the appearance of the figure similar. We'll just have the the rendering be more three-dimensional. Okay? So what mass should we start with for the body? Cylinder. Let's start with the cylinder. Let's make it more of an oval. Um, do you think it would be wise? I'm going to rotate my screen since it's landscape. I'm going to draw a cylinder with my technical pen. Oh gosh, it's there, I promise. You guys, this is the worst. If I could adjust the settings, uh, Oh. Jack, you're a freaking genius. Is it? Oh, look, we can even set it flat as long as the screen doesn't shine on it. Is that better? So we'll run with that. Thank you, Jack. Beautiful idea. And we're going to we're going to approach this in a very simplified kind of way, um, given more time. You could do this slightly differently, but we're gonna start by making it a red cylinder. And red is the local color that the kid has suggested to us. So in my color picker, I'm gonna choose slider over to hue. And if I double click in this upper right hand corner, it's gonna give me the pure version of that red. So you can slide over, double click here, and this zone right here is the, the pure color. Now I can drop that in here. Doesn't look three-dimensional yet, but we're going to get there. Uh, Do you want the outline to be red too? We could, but like I say, this is kind of a simplified version. And the outline is going to ruin the illusion of three-dimensional form. So maybe we should while we're at it. Let's just make the outline red. So it's completely red. The outline is red. I just dragged the color into the... Uh, it's like for every return to lunch or dismissal to lunch, I forget. There's a ton, a crap ton. Um, now, I would say, and you guys can help me interpret this, but it, the yellow orange looks kind of like a turtle shell. Would you say that? So, it could be kind of like how kids draw the like spikes on a stegosaurus. Mm -hmm. Or you were thinking wings. I, I would probably have my wings over here and correct me. Let's take a look. 
So what we're going to have to decide, and you guys can talk amongst yourselves and maybe we can come to a consensus, is what's best? Do we just draw a yellow line and then work with the form principle on just a, a circular shape? Or do we have an overlapping shape over the red? You guys consider that. Okay, so you can always pull in and then hold that. And if it overfills, you can slide down. Yeah. Emily, what do you think? Should we make it, I'll give you a couple options. Should we make it where it's like we have a new shape, new layer, and we just say it's here? Like it's an overlapping shape? Or do we say... We're not going to do that all together. We're just going to go to this layer, draw a division of this, and then make it where it's like half yellow, half red. I like the division. The division? Separate layers? Let's try that because it'll, it'll give us some more interesting things to experiment. So what I did, I'll, I'll recreate, but I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to change my color. I'm going to slide up here. We're still in the pure outer section because we were in the red hue. Now we're in the yellow orange hue. If you double tap up here, it'll give you that pure color. And I'm gonna make this a little bit flatter of an oval and I'm gonna have it be a little bit wider than my current shape. And you can tilt your oval if you want to. If it wasn't the tilt that you wanted to, you could take your move tool and you could twist it like this. So even if you end up with an oval that's like this, your work isn't lost. You can fill that in, grab your move tool, and you can twist it and scale it up to the size you want. So many different ways to work in Procreate that make it real, real handy. But we just want what's starting to look a little bit like a hamburger. We have a, a bun and a very raw meat patty underneath. Okay, or a tomato. Yeah, we could have a slice of tomato. So let's deal with a very typical lighting scenario. We're going to apply the same lighting scenario that the cow had because that would be a very default. It's what we're experiencing now, although in a complex way because there are nine sources of light in each room. And so if you ever tried to draw, it's awful because there are nine shadows and none of them are very distinct. So this lighting is horrible, but it simulates daytime light which is one giant light above coming down on us and casting a shadow. So for the sake of, just so you can see what I'm doing, here's our light source, okay? Light is coming down from above on this. Let's, I'm gonna move that so that when we go to alpha lock, I don't mess myself up, okay? I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna alpha lock this layer. And I'm going to come back to my color picker and we have to make a choice now because the local color isn't enough to communicate form. The local color just tells you that your shirt is blue. But to make it have form, you have to have lighter and darker tints, shades and tones, if you will, of that color. So there are a couple different ways to do lighter. If we move from more orange into more yellow, and then we use a, let's say an airbrush, which is, I'm gonna use the soft blend airbrush, fairly large, and I'm gonna use a yellow that's lighter, but it's not moving toward white. It's just a more yellow, a pure yellow and not an orange yellow. I'll show you what that looks like. If I paint outside here on the edge, I can slowly build up I'm not, I'm occasionally going into the form, but I'm building up a lighter tone on the top. The main thing is that we want to keep that edge fairly soft. So if we, if we used the wrong brush or the wrong size and we drew like this through here, that's too hard of an edge. We want this edge very, very soft here. So if I have a more pure yellow, like here, and I have a more orange yellow, 
our brain is automatically going to see that even though they're both very chromatic, they're both very bright, they are different parts of the same object. In the same way, we can color pick our original and we can go to our color slider. And now we're going to drop both the chroma, which is how intense the color is. We're going to make it more gray and we're going to make it darker. So we're going to slide this way toward the middle. If you go too far, it's going to look odd because it's going to look too cool. It looks sort of green and ugh. So we, if we have to default to anything, we're going to stay closer to the right hand side so it still feels more brown. So you want to be in this zone over here. Okay, and you can mess with it, but we want to have a little lip on the bottom side that has shadow. And I'm going to make my brush really big and kind of stay out from the edge so that that shadow shape is soft. I don't like that. There we go. As long as you keep your edges soft, this is going to make a lot of sense. It's going to look rounded. If you wanted to bring in another touch of darkness just at that very bottom edge, you could. You could make it really dark just along this bottom edge to communicate that there's like a lip that goes from that top shape down to the bottom shape. Now we're really getting that hamburger type appearance. We started with the local color. We added a lighter version in terms of value, but it's still a really chromatic version. We went from orange to yellow. So it's just in appearance a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add a very light value highlight here. But hopefully this starts to look three-dimensional. What we're going to have to do is pick this solid color to bring in some of the texture. So let me zoom in just a little bit. Let's use a, a hard, either a smaller diameter spray paint brush, which is probably the best way to do it, or you could use a harder edge brush. But we're going to divide this thing into segments. Now, the worst thing you could do right here is draw them like this. It looks like a baguette. It does look like a baguette, but the problem also is that it doesn't help us communicate a sense of form. What we want is a rounding of these. So we want to imagine a cross contour form where it's sort of curving as it goes around. I just, I dropped the um, diameter of my soft blend airbrush all the way down to nothing. So because it's so small, it looks like a line. And I know this is a little subtle, so let me make this slightly darker so you can see these. Here are my lines running through. This is just a basis for the next part of the drawing that we're going to tackle. But by arching them a little bit, it helps communicate that this is a rounded form. If you draw them as a straight diagonal, it flattens it out again. And we're pushing against flatness. Let me move this just a little. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now to help break up the sense of, you know, continuous curve on this, which the kid has drawn, it's a continuous curve. But if we're thinking about these as plates, there has to be sort of a seam where they're meeting. So I'm going to take my eraser. What is this? I'm going to move from my technical pen and I like to use the same brush for my eraser that I'm using for my drawing. So I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to create a little V at each one of these meetings. Too big. A little V that makes sort of a, a plate. I want this to be as rounded as possible. But we're going to have this feel like an armadillo or like a, maybe a turtle shell or something. But there are are different levels to this. So just a little V at each one of these. Okay. 
Now it really looks like a baguette. So if I zoom in, my line is sort of the indicator for where my V is starting and stopping. It looks like I'm choosing to put um, one side of the V to the left of each line, but the line is just an indicator of where to do it. So if you do it, treat it in the same way each time, it'll look fine. And I kind of want these to be, you know, gradual slopes. But while I'm zoomed in, I'll show you the idea here. I'm going to color pick from down here in these shadow values. And I'm going to draw this line in a soft focus kind of way. So I'm going over this. I'm getting rid of the line. And I can step downward toward a darker value, but I want to shrink my brush. We're just kind of saying that where these meet there's a little bit less light hitting. And then as you go toward the darker side, your shadow has to be darker, otherwise that's not gonna show up. So we're using this darker shadow value down here. And I'm decreasing pressure as I'm coming out of this line to try to soften this. Soft edges are real great for communicating rounded form. Hard edges, if I were to come in with my technical pen, you'll see it. Inking technical pen. That's a very hard edge. And it sort of ruins that illusion of form. It kind of flattens everything out. So I've got a line, and now it's at least, I mean, it's still kind of like a croissant. But there's like a little segment to it. Do we want the whole thing to be that color? Um, so what should happen, this is a great question, is do you notice how if we break these down into individual little bands, we're saying there's a very light yellow up here, and then there's a golden yellow here, then there's a dark brown here, which is a, dark, a darker, duller version of that orange, and then there's nearly a black, a very dark brown. Well, that same thing should happen in a corresponding way to these lines. Instead of it being bright yellow, it should be orange gold up here. And then when it gets to the orange gold, instead of being orange gold, it should be this slightly darker value. And then when it gets into this brown, it should be this black. So this is like a shadow relationship to your lights. So on the light side, your line should be slightly lighter. And on the dark side, your shadow should be slightly darker. Do you see that? There's sort of like a dividing line right here where the values that I'm using here were picked from here and the values that I'm using here were picked from up here. Now, it would be great if we had time to do that for every segment, but I'm trying to demonstrate some things and not like just crush the whole class period. Let's add a little bit more light. So I'm gonna color pick my yellow here if it will let me. And now we're going to move toward white. Okay, we're going to slide this guy a little bit more toward white. I'm going to use my soft airbrush. And I'm going to start with a gentle lightening of this area inside here. Okay. If it's too dramatic, it might look kind of funky. Gentle lightning. It might not even be perceptible, but it's right in here. Okay, now I'm going to step up a little bit lighter. Don't do that. Step up slightly lighter here. And gently lighten within there again. Too firm. We're creating a little haze, a little halo around what's going to be our highlight. I have arbitrarily decided 
that this shell is what I'm thinking of it as, this baguette shell is shiny. And so to finish, I'm gonna double click over here and I'm going to press in pretty firmly a little highlight. It's got a little haze around it, so it doesn't look like a shape on there. And if it's too firm, I can come in and soften it out. But now we've got all the elements of light logic in a sphere. We've got the light most facing plane, transitional values, the terminator where the light stops, and then this shadow of occlusion here. And we have a highlight. All that stuff's at work here. If you don't zoom in, it's subtle enough that it doesn't look like I am, you know, cartoonishly drawing. Again, I'll use the ink pen to show you. And I'm not saying, this is a highlight. These are my segments. You know, that's a little bit too firm handed. Now let's keep it going. I'm going to turn alpha lock on this so I don't mess myself up. Um, sometimes you'll want to do something on this layer and you'll forget the alpha lock was on. So I'll turn it off, but I'm switching to my red layer. I'll give you just a second to kind of get to a point because I know that I move pretty quickly and then you guys have to react. So we're just doing one segment of the shell because we can't do the whole creature and we can't not, and it's going to take too long. And then once we do some of this red, we'll take a break, use the restroom, check your phone and all that stuff and come back to it. Okay, how is light interacting with this red shape? What's one thing we have to account for that we didn't with this little shell? The shell's shadow. The shell is going to have a cast shadow if it's sitting on top of the red. So I'm gonna color pick the red. And just as we did before, we're gonna need tints, shades, and tones. So I'm going to tone down, I'm gonna to move toward gray in the middle here, and I'm going to darken this red just a little bit. That's not just a little bit, that's kind of a lot. It's gonna look like a maroon. I'm not on alpha lock, but I should be, because if I alpha lock this, then it won't go out here in the white margin when I get to the edge of this form. So I'm gonna switch back to my airbrushing, soft blend, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna run underneath this little baguette shell. And I should start to see a shadow drop in. Oh gosh, I made a little, little strong. Oh, I never lifted up, poop on that. I started with light pressure and I was liking it and then I wanted to exaggerate it and there I lifted up this time so I can step back if I need to. All right, there's my cast shadow. The shell is casting a shadow onto the body. The body is that pure local color, that really intense chromatic red. And the cast shadow is a duller, darker, so less chromatic, darker value version of the red. And while we have that, we might as well come to the bottom of this and make our brush a little bit bigger and start to indicate the bottom side of the shadow. Because it's probably only gonna catch a little bit of light before it starts dropping into shadow again. And then I can drop my shadow darker. I think I'm gonna make it more red rather than more black. Because if you do this as a shadow, notice I'm gonna double tap for black. Well, don't do that. In red, I'm double tapping for black and you add that on, kind of like we did with black before. I mean, it works, but it doesn't feel red anymore. And I really enjoy a shadow that is based on the local color and is just a darker variant of that color. So this is a very dark maroon. It's still over in this top right quadrant of this area, and it really communicates shadow, but it also communicates redness. I feel like this is the better way to go when painting shadows, is to have some connection to the local color. I'm gonna make the bottom side quite dark. But not universally across there. 
And now it looks sort of like a croissant hot dog, a weird kind of thing. When we come back, we're going to add legs. That'll be real fun. And see if we can't add that head on there before we leave today. And you'll have a little bit more practical experience of working with Procreate and turning a flat drawing into more of a three-dimensional figure. And maybe a, another tool in your toolkit to, to move forward on this project. All right. It is right now 1241. Let's see you back at like 1246. That's a five-minute break. It might be beneficial at this point to look at some reference. And we haven't even gotten into the whole part of making reference and, and researching and that type of thing. But I'm gonna use the cow, since we started with the cow, as the basis for the legs for this monster. But we need to have different views of the cow. Right, Aaron? You would think so. Yes. What view is gonna be most helpful? The frontal, thank you. Okay, if you look at this, even though it's foreshortened, Notice how the body extends out and the legs slope downward and in toward the body. That's important because it communicates something about light or the way we render it is going to communicate something about its stance. So I don't want that. We're going to go back and we're going to say that if we draw them straight up and down like this, it's going to look very blocky. And so we're going to render them in such a way so that they look like they slope inwards just slightly. All right, so let's get back to this. And I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna put it in between these two and I'm gonna start with red as my local. So I'm gonna color pick my intense red and I'm gonna draw a cylindrical shape, but I'm gonna draw it. Let me, let me communicate how I'm thinking about this and see if that helps. So I'm thinking from the front side, this... Wait, you want it in between the two layers? Yeah, it can be in between. They still want to be centered. Yes, you can... No, go back to your technical pen. Thank you. Good, good question. Let's go back to your technical pen. If I were to look at this creature from the back side, here's its booty, okay? And its legs are going to slope in like this. And so these are its feet standing like this. If I drew them where they were straight up and down like this, Light is going to fall more continuously on them, but it doesn't look as natural. The stance is going to seem a little bit weird. So what's going to happen is with them sloping inward like this as cylinders, light is going to start to taper off around here, and it's going to decrease in value as you go down this way. Now, to get this cylindrical form to attach to this cylindrical form, I probably am going to need some mass of muscle outside of it that the creature is using to hold itself up. So I'm gonna start with like a spherical bubble and a cylinder, uh, cylinder underneath. That's on this layer three that's in between the two. So I'm gonna add a spherical bubble, make it a perfect circle if I want, that's fine. And a cylindrical, and I'll show you how I'm thinking about the cylinder. The cylinder is open like, oh, that's a little bit too much. It's open maybe a little bit like this at the top and it's sloping downward and inward in this way. That's how I'm thinking about it, but that's not what I'm going to render. What I'm going to render is just flat red here, flat red here, flat red everywhere. The whole thing is just flat red. So I'm going to think about this guy as a sphere and I'm going to move a little bit more quickly on this because we should be used to the process. If this is my local, I need uh, lighter and darker versions of this. Now remember, you absolutely could create a palette if you wanted to. You could go to your palettes and you could say, I'm going to make a new palette and I'm going to use a light red. I'm going to drag that. Whoops. Where did my palettes go? I'm going to drag that color. No, what, what am I doing wrong? Touch it there. There it, show, it just shows up. That's my darker red. Uh, where's my color picker? Add to my palette this one. I could add a darker version to it. 
So if I have a palette, then I'm able to just go back in here and select from this in a quicker kind of way. Although right now I'm really struggling to do this. Yes? Oh, Rowan, I thought you raised your hand. So now you can see I've got three values of red in my palette. And if I wanted to, then I don't have to go to my color picker. I can just go in between these. It's a little bit more standardized. And it's up to you. So I'm going to use my middle value right now and my airbrush. And I'm going to start adding. Let me alpha lock this because I only want it on this form. I'm going to start adding value. on these outer edges. Let me make it a little bit more dramatic for you. Thinking of it like a sphere. I can add lighter versions of this. I don't like how pink this is necessarily, but So now it looks sort of like a popsicle because you've got a sphere shape and I want this to kind of connect in with these other values. So I'm going to pick some of these values from here and try to integrate it just a little bit better. And I might even turn alpha lock off and allow myself to kind of join some of these together by drawing over both surfaces. So now if you look at this, if I turn off the previous one, for turn off this layer, I'm starting to draw across these two forms, and now they don't feel quite as disconnected. I'm actually okay with this line right here because it makes it feel like the muscle sort of juts out um, outside of the shell range, but I do feel like I need to have a little bit of shadow on this top edge so it doesn't feel totally disconnected. It'll feel like it's just oddly floating out there. And then I'm going to turn alpha lock back on so that I can continue to add these shadow values going down this leg and not have it go outside here. Because remember, if it's sloped inward, it's moving away from the light and the body is blocking more of the light. Nope, not that guy. One, this guy. I'm going to run around real quick and see how you guys are doing. Let you catch up a little bit if you're behind. Answer questions if you got some. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's keep on keeping on. All right, we are going to add what it looks like. What it does look like a hot dog with a leg. 
we're going to add to this in a way that relates to the kids drawing. Okay, so dare we without getting into the neck and stuff, which would follow the similar principle. The neck is which kind of geometric form? S. Yeah, I would. What did you say? S. Yeah, it's an S, but it's a cylinder. So if you've ever looked at a crane or a bird's neck, it's a cylinder. So it's like a snake. It's a, a, a cylinder that's winding like that. So it means it would follow some of this, um, but horizontally. Anyway, I want to add some of this weird stuff and show how we might start imagining light with that. So let's put an eye on its body. We might as well. Okay. Everything, I think, if you can in Procreate, use new layers, you give yourself lots of options. Okay. So we're going to put an eye right here on the body. And we're going to start with, uh, let's just make it a geometric form because that's what we've been talking about. So we'll keep rehearsing that idea. I'm going to make a perfect sphere that is gray. And I'm going to double tap over here for a middle gray. For this, if you double tap, it really shouldn't matter where you slide your hue because your perfect middle gray is going to be totally neutral. So you could be over here in the greens, and if you double tap, you got it gray. So I'm going to draw, nope, technical pen, sorry, switch back to your technical pen, and draw a perfect circle. Fill that sucker in. I didn't like the way that filled. I undid it, and I'm going to add more to the fill so that the line is more full. Added it a little bit more. Okay, why did we do gray? The sclera. We call that the whites of your eyes. Why did we make it gray? Because guys, if you ever, I, I don't threaten students often. I'm just kidding. But when you draw a portrait, if you draw the whites of the eye white, you're wrong. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're wrong. Because your eyes sit in a socket, which means unless a flash is being taken, it's gray. It's sitting in a shadow. And so if you look at the people around you and you're real honest with yourself, the whites of their eyes are gray. The part that is going to appear white is the highlight. And we're going to put that in in just a second. All right, let's imagine, um, I'll, I'll draw this from the side just so you can kind of see what I'm thinking. This is the white of the eye, but we're going to have a red eyelid that goes over it this way and under it this way. And then we're going to have a black pupil that looks out at us kind of like this. Okay, that's the profile view. Whoops, redo, redo please. So we're gonna sample our red or pull it from our palette, whichever one you're doing. And kind of like we did with the lines of the baguette, we're going to curve it as it goes across. And the underside, I'm imagining that this is pointing down a little bit. So the underside, I might not do as much. I might just fill this in with a red. I'm gonna make this red a little bit brighter though. Maybe double tap and make it the pure light version that goes over the top here. Because we can always add some shadow, but I want it to be in this middle band where it's catching light. Now it's going to look like it's sticking out from the creature. Let me zoom in. There you go. I would love to have this eyelid have a little shadow line underneath it. So I'm going to emphasize that. And if I wanted this to be real nice and beautiful, I'd, I'd have this curve be perfected. Okay. Now what is, we did this with the shell, but what's that eyelid going to naturally do to the sphere of our eye? Cast okay, shadow sample. Darken. I don't want to go too dark. And now I'm switching to my airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to go pretty small with the diameter though. And I'm just going to go right here. I'm not on alpha lock. So I have to be a little bit more careful this time. It's too red. I want it to be a little bit more perfectly gray. So this is going to be kind of subtle. But if, I, if it's feeling a little bit too red, I can make it maybe a little bit more purple or a little bit more blue. 
creating a shadow underneath this. Let's add a pupil. I'm going to double tap for black. I'm just going to have this be a demon eye. If I were smart, sorry, I got to switch back to technical pen. If I were smart, I think I would have made the eyelid on a different level, which would have made this whole thing a little bit more easy. So I'm just playing around while you guys are doing this. I think I'm going to use this value while I have the technical pen to go back over and sharpen up that line for the bottom of the eyelid. And then it kind of depends on how you want your, like if you want your eye to have a color, like well, we could make it crazy where it's got, you know, wild pink eyes but I would still move your pink to something that's a little bit duller and darker and keep it pretty soft with that airbrush and start to indicate the, the color of the cornea, but only as it comes away from the eyelid. Leave it all black underneath there. You can make this part, this bottom part, more purple or pink or whatever you want, but up underneath the eyelid, leave it black and that will help reinforce the sense of the, the eyelid casting a shadow. Oh, that's scary good. What a beaut. And then even though it may not be super consistent with light logic, we can just, while we have our technical pen, double, pat, double tap for a white. I don't have my technical pen. I'm going to keep this pretty hard edged because this is a highlight on the eye. I'm going to do it lower down like this. That's cute looking. Hello. What's up? Can I borrow Tegan Benson? You can borrow Tegan Benson. Yes. Uh, for your business. Okay. So before we get too far here, I'm going to go back to this eye and I'm going to try to communicate the sense that it is rounding. And so again, I'm going to go back to my gray. I'm going to try to keep it nice and gray, maybe shift over to, to the cooler so that it looks like it's gray and slide this guy down, switch back to my airbrush. And some of this stuff you're going to be like, oh, he's just following the same pattern over and over again. Local value, lighter version, darker version. But I'm going to darken the bottom of this eye like it's turning away from the light. That feels real, real red to me still, but maybe that's just fine. If you can work on soft edges, that's going to be helpful. Your sclera, the, the light part of your eye, it may even have a little highlight in and of itself. Like it might get a little bit lighter in here, but just slightly. It's not probably going to be as light as the white of the eye. Why is that so weird looking? And then I think it's important that we contextualize this a little bit better, meaning it, it feels a little bit pasted on right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to work to make this a little bit more connected. I'm going to switch it up and try a different brush. 
Uh, no, I'll, I'll keep it similar. I'll just use inking. It might be a little bit hard edged, but that's fine. I'm gonna have the lower eyelid catch a little bit of light right here before it turns back underneath. And then I'll probably just mess around with my darker tones and my airbrush to get that to feel a little bit more connected. And this top edge feels a little bit disconnected, so I'm gonna soften that a little, make it feel, especially right here by the shell, feel like it's kind of covered up a little. But then maybe on that outer edge, get lighter a bit. Okay, so there, there we have the beginnings of this creature using the form principle, which we never really got to finish up in oil paint. We started with the cube. Some of you maybe got that far. Some of you didn't even get that far, but um, yes. Sure, yeah. Let's, any, any other drill team people you want to talk to real quick? I'm looking for band. Oh, band. Gotcha. Not drill team, color guard, color guard. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. So this is a reasonable finishing point for today. Now I've moved a little bit quickly and you might start to say like, mine's not super refined yet. We have a few minutes, maybe five or six minutes until we're going to save this and back it up. Um, see if you can't maybe make another line come to life the same way that we did. Um, or add another leg, but this is the basis. And then from here, you just kind of keep applying that same logic to it. So I'm gonna add one more leg. You know what? I'm probably just gonna duplicate this whole layer. Check this out. Duplicate the layer, use my move tool, and then why not work smarter, not harder? And now I already have another leg. The beauty of Procreate. It's a little messed up because the shadow's not quite right, but maybe I could flip it horizontal. And now it works a little bit better. Oh my goodness, what a beaut. There you go. Far from finished, it might need some significant work, but this is showing you working with layers can be very beneficial. Working with alpha lock is kind of important. Using your selection and your move tools, getting comfortable with those. Making palettes in your color picker can be very beneficial so you don't have to keep creating them. I mean, it's just as effective to color pick from your image. But all of that stuff hopefully gets you a little bit more comfortable and shows you some strategies for how to make something like this happen. I'm going to, while you're finishing up, I'm gonna go real crazy and I'm gonna make some spikes on this shell. So if you feel like you're ahead of the game, you can follow along, but that's up to you. Um, save, definitely save it as a Procreate file first and then share it again as a, a JPEG in case you need to turn it in, which you will at some point.
Yes. Have you turned this down on Google Classroom? No, I haven't created it because there's going to be a different, you know, more practice to add to this. So just make sure you save your Procreate file and you save a JPEG of it. In case you don't do anything more to it, you can turn it in next class. We're going to do a separate practice activity next class. So let's change my background color so you can see my sick spike. Yeah, there he is. Coming to life. most of them I'll show you that's pretty fun okay I'm gonna stop the recording enjoy learning at home <laughs>